The Wholesome One here, talking Miami football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. The Wholesome One, of course, has his own YouTube channel, and I would encourage everybody to head on over there and uh, to subscribe. So H-O-L-S-U-M and the number one, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Give him some likes over there. Watch the live streams. Watch the breakdowns. And, of course, uh, check out the videos and, again, support him over there. Uh, you've definitely picked up a fan in the Rod Farva here, Wholesome One. He says, uh, the Wholesome One's become my favorite uh, one of Mark's guests, and he's dropping down some serious wisdom. So Thank some you. good stuff there. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's humbling. That's humbling. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Ronan, we're having some issues with the lighting right now. I did not anticipate. Yeah, I had to, I had to roll over, I, man. I'm, I'm looking crazy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't anticipate this. And the, uh, the, the afternoon sunset is bam, just, and I really can't do anything with it the way we've got things set up right now. But, and it, uh, you know, it, it, it's okay. I, I prefer this weather, Mark. We just got, well, we were negative 51 last week. So yeah, I'm happy for 12 degrees. Okay. You're happy with 12 right now. Are we looking at 12 right now? Uh-huh. For you? Mm -hmm. Really? So you're still in the deep freeze. Um, That's okay. You get used to it. Yeah. We're we're typically in that 25 range for most of the winter, but uh, the last few days have been more like it hit 51 yesterday. It was like 45 today, uh, and it's been nice and sunny, blue skies. So pretty good here in Connecticut at this point. All right, Wholesome One, I'm going to hit you with this. The three main backs, you got Harris, Cheney, and Knighton. Who does what well? Who should be used in what situations and in what style? Break them down from a from a technical standpoint and in regards to how the play calling should take advantage of their skill sets. Wow. That's a great question. Uh, you know, Mark, I, I try to make sure I watch as much Miami content on your channel. I mean, you got some of those other people that I'm sorry will never get a view from me, but uh, uh, I like the Ohio State channel sometimes too, man. They, they, those guys know some ball. Goodness gracious, they can break it down. Uh, you know, shout out to OHIO. Um, wow, these three backs, four if you had, if you, uh, that Franklin, you know, if he, if he stays yeah. with Miami, yeah. but we'll, we'll see with that. He, he kind of gets in his feelings a lot. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's this conversation. All right, Mark, about Donald Cheney Jr. being RB1. Everyone keeps saying this. Mark, my question is, what has Cam Harris done to lose his job? But what has he done? Has he fumbled? He has one career fumble in his career. Okay. Does he drop the football? According to Pro Football Focus, only four drops in his career. Is he a bad pass protector in the pocket? Nope. According to Pro Football Focus, he has the highest pass, pass blocking grade on the team besides Brevin Jordan, who was our tight end, not offensive line. Uh, in, any other things that a running back could do to lose their job? Probably not. If you can't pass protect, if you fumble and you can't catch, those may be three things as the reason why you should get your job pulled. He does none of those things. So and as far as to lose his job. Now, I understand the two underclassmen may be playing very good, all right? And I'm not here to knock any of them. I'm very happy that they all are canes and we can move forward with that. But here's my thing. Why do we want to take away from one to feed the other? And we could just split and let them all go. Let them all come in situationally and do that thing well. To have a three stable back system is amazing, okay? Because one of them doesn't get beat up all game long, and the other ones hop in on third down and catch some screens and, and screen passes like we had the first half of last season. I think Cam Harris is a balanced back. Don Chaney is a balanced back. But Jalen Knight is a little bit more of the scat back, the guy that can get missing for 80 yards on him, okay? Now, all three of them can be used in different facets, but you don't want to get to the point where you know the play based on the back that is in the game. That is a huge thing with film as a defensive guy. When you sit and watch, you're like, okay, when four gets in the game, it's either toss or screen. When two gets in the game, it's either read option or just pure dive. But when 23 is in the game, we never know. All right? You don't want to get to a point where somebody can identify that in your offense. So you should be able to call – 
a multitude of plays, a multitude of formations with all three of these backs is what they bring to the table for the Miami Hurricanes. Now, based on your scheme, this is where the problem lies. Cam Harris comes in the game, and Mark, we're running 20 dive, 21 dive. We'll just give him the ball and run right up into the gut and expect him to break 60 yards. But then you bring Jalen Knight and, and Donald Cheney in. Now you got an ace jet read option. Now you got a split back triple option. Now you got one motion into the other side. And you throw it to him on the screen. All this fancy stuff when they get in the game. When Cam's in the game, we just run dive. But then we turn around and blame Cam. Why isn't Cam getting all his? I wonder why. Because when you get in the game, you call 22 and 23 dive for the man. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's been something I've, I've had. I've kind of kept my mouth shut because I don't want to come off as bashing any of these young men because they don't deserve that type of energy. But I'm just tired of people just crowning another player when the one who's been the starter has done nothing wrong to lose his job. You know? Now, when we start talking about wide receivers, I understand Pope and Wiggins should be holding water, okay, because they can't catch. Until proven otherwise, they cannot catch a NCAA-sized football. That's just that. But Cam Harris has done nothing to be disrespected and treated the way that he is by this fan base. He done nothing, in my opinion, honestly. Um, now, what as far as what they all can bring to the table, like I said, Cam – and Cheney are pretty similar. Now, Coach, listen, Cheney, size, speed, aggression, does not go down easily. All right. When he gets his body a little bit more reshaped because he came in with a little bit of a bad, a bad fat, and he's had a, a good change in body type uh, just from his small time with Coach Felix. So I can only imagine now with a calendar year. Cam Harris shirtless is what you want every running back to look like. A muscle bulldog, the man neck. Cam, the man, uh, the man neck, Mark, he probably can't even turn his head <laughs> to see people on the side of him. He is so swole, man. And, and, and night in, he can get missing or he can also run you over. I mean, he was a fourth-ranked running back country, in the country for a reason. And thank God he switched to us and didn't stick to Tallahassee, you know, um, that's 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 how I think about it. This we have to stop doing. That, okay, every single recruit that comes in doesn't have to come in and steal reps from the the person in front of them. All right, and then every starter who may have had a tough season or a tough group isn't the worst player in the world and pull them off and kick them and pull a scally until given a, a nice sample size. We need to be able to be careful on our critique of collegiate players. Now, like I said, you got a couple players that's been doing this for a while. Bad. Okay, you're giving me two whole seasons of bad play. It, the critique can come. It'll be a little different. All right, but Cam, Mark, I'm going to keep saying this. He has done nothing to lose his job. Absolutely nothing wrong. So that evaluation holds, even if you've got a player, regardless of the position, you got a player who is a talented player, mm -hmm. um, again, doesn't make the mistakes that you just outlined. And again, that doesn't mean he's perfect. That doesn't mean he's never fumbled or never dropped a pass. But yeah, he's extremely reliable, carries out his assignments, is a talented player. We're not talking about a guy that's just marginal in terms of talent. But then you bring in somebody, you recruit and sign somebody who's potentially a superstar. I'm not saying this is the case, but mm -hmm. I'm saying in terms of a player that's done all the right things and been reliable in their job, in your opinion, if you're running the operation and making those decisions, can they lose the job if you sign a player who is and has shown to be a better player? Yes. That comes from the evaluation process throughout the season, which we saw last season where towards the middle and, and to the end cam got his job back but you also you know some coaches do little things like that to light a fire under a player how do you respond to me starting the young buck this one game you know how do you take to that are you on the sideline moping are you not doing your job are you not giving the high effort 
because now you 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 see how how mentally weak some players can be in that aspect. But if you've been around for a while and you recruited this young man, all right, you should know this young man in and out. You should know what makes him tick. You should know what makes him click. You should know what makes him want to go out there and play. And you should also know what I can do that can really hurt and bring and demean this young man in the spirits, all right? You have to know that as a position coach. So when you go out there and you make a decision like that, let's look back to 2012, all right? There's a, a back, number five, Mike James starts for the Miami Hurricanes. The Miami Hurricanes signed a borderline five-star athlete by the name of Randy Duke Johnson from Miami North. He comes in. Duke doesn't start a game that season. Who had more rushing yards? Mike James. Who had more touchdowns? Mike James. Okay. But Duke was able to come in and be that big-time scat back, punt kick return, he was able to play his role in the offense as the second to the starting back. Now, it's different. One was a senior. One was a true freshman. Now you have one where one's going to come back for a senior season. These other ones are going to be sophomores. Due to COVID, one's a junior and one's a freshman again. You know, the other two. All right. But experience-wise, they're four-year and, and second-year player going in. The best thing you want to be able to do is – to keep them all happy, but at a position like running back, Mark, just because you start doesn't mean you end up with the most carries of the game. You know, it's not like QB or middle linebacker where you kind of want them to stay in the game and get a flow of the game and get a feel of it and go through the whole 60 minutes with majority of the snaps. At QB, all the snaps, you know, praise be the healthiness, okay, of the player. At running back, you can hit from all type of angles. You want to be able to get a lot of them to play. You want all three of those backs to touch the ball in some way, shape, form, or fashion in that 60-minute time span. So uh, when it comes to running back, Mark, to answer your question, yes, a player who happens to be really well, really good, can come in and take another player's uh, starting spot. But I would make sure I stress to them, who starts doesn't really matter. It's about the snap count. It's about me putting you in the best position to not only help yourself, but to help this team win football games. And if we split everybody 33 and a third across those three, you know for a fact you have to do the best that you possibly can with your 8, 9, 10, 15 carries. I expect you to be out there pulling people, ripping and huddling, and <laughs> you're doing anything to take advantage of 100% of your 15 snaps that you or 15 carries you get as a back. So uh, I love the problem that we have. I hope that it continues to push the young man. And, and Coach Hickson has done a great job. I know Coach Hickson is our running backs coach. He's done a great job of motivating the young man. Okay, even when Cam had his issue on social media, he had a way of pulling them in, talking to him, brought him in the office, according to his office, they sat down and spoke. And all three of them went to sit down to Coach Diaz and make sure everything was okay. Make sure we're on the same page here. We love you. We want you to be a part of the, of the team. These two young men are, are playing well. So we're going to give them carries. It was no beef. There was no issue. All right. But we have fans who come on here and disrespect Cam. I don't think that he deserves any of that energy for being an older player who, A, didn't have a problem with allowing them to, you know, he didn't have any problems with helping them. He didn't have any problems with them getting reps. He just wanted the same play calls as the other ones. That's the only issue that it was. And we got it fixed. And he ended up doing really well in the second half of the season. So, fans, let's be careful, man. Cam Harris has done nothing but love this institution. We should stand by. And that's the reason I asked the follow-up. I'm not saying that was the case, but I was asking the follow-up to say, is Cam Harris a certain level player that's done nothing wrong, done all the right things, been reliable, but a certain level player? And maybe is the coaching staff evaluating Donald Chaney to be just another level player um, that, that they're going for the more talented player? Mm-hmm. And that, that may be true. You know, as far as what we've seen on Saturdays, there's a little difference between the two as far as the effort and how they run and, you know, that kind of get missing speed. It's, it's a little difference between the two, but that's us from afar evaluating. These coaches see it every day. I just ask that it be fair. I just ask that you, if we're going to split these reps, don't just pull 100% of the reps from one because you want to see the two new shiny toys. Let's not do that, okay? Let's be 
uh, very good in our evaluation. I think we had that issue midway through the season, but it got fixed as the season went on. And then also, unfortunately, due to um, Jalen Knighton's shoulder injury slash concussions, he wasn't able to play the last couple of games, and that, that played a big role in 